What are you making today, Miss Martha? I'm making seafoam candy. When I'm calling seafoam candy, you may be thinking of something different. You may be thinking of divinity. But when I hear divinity, I think of the white candy that's cut in bars, but it's got the little colorful jelly candies in it, red and yellow and green. That's what I think of when I when I hear the name divinity in regards to candy. Uh, when I'm speaking seafoam, you may be thinking honeycomb, kind of like what was in the squid game. But to me, honeycomb is honeycomb. It's kind of like uh, how you make a peanut brittle, but you're just not putting peanuts in it. To me, that's what honeycomb is. Some people call it meringues. Well, meringue is meringue to me. This is sea foam. Uh, it's very simple ingredients. It's going to be one box of uh, light brown sugar, a dash of salt, and usually you've seen me heavy handed on measurements before, but when I say it has to be less than a half cup of water, you better put that on the counter. You better eyeball it and it has to come under a half cup of water. That's where everybody makes a lot of mistakes and their candy comes out runny and it won't set up. You're going to need an egg white. Crack it in a different bowl than the one you're going to mix it in because you don't want to eat. You make sure you get no yolk in it at all or your meringue won't set up. You're going to need a half cup of, of crushed pecans. And you're going to need a teaspoon of vanilla. You're going to need a little glass of ice water. It's not going to go in it. It's for doing the softball test because I'm old school and I'm old fashioned. I don't use a candy thermometer, so I still do the water test. For items. We're going to need wax paper to roll it out on. You have, you have a saucepan when we move over to the to the stove to cook it. And I was afraid to use my KitchenAid mixer to make the meringue. Not not necessarily to make the meringue, but to pour the hot boiling syrup into it because I didn't want it to splatter. And I've got four little chihuahuas. I didn't want somebody to get burnt. So I pulled out my old hand mixer that I used to bake a million pound cake with over the years. And um, it didn't want to quite start for me. So I had to run to Walmart and get myself a new little hand mixer. Okay. I'm going to set a few things up and we're going to move along with the recipe. Just give me a second here. Okay, I got a little better organized now. And also, I had to cheat. I had to check something. I had to go dig out. Not all these fancy cookbooks and stuff over here that I had for a million years, but my old recipe cards. Ones that were written by my mama when I was alone by me when I was little. I mean, like I said, I've been I've been uh, cooking in the kitchen since I was old enough to drag the chair across the floor and hop up on the counter and I could help uh, sift the ingredients. Or we used to, before we had hand mixers, we used to have those little hand crepe beaters that you try to beat the egg white, beat, beat the pancake mix up, beat the egg whites from the meringues to go on the pies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was the little uh, sous chef at a very early age and I had to make sure that uh, I've got my measurements right. I'm on point. I mean, you'd be surprised that some things are like automatic memory, but I just wanted to make sure. Now what we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead and put our, we're going to go ahead and put, empty the one pound box of light brown sugar into our heavy bottom saucepan. Easy enough. Dash of salt, which is usually, uh, depending upon how many holes are in your salt shakes, like two little shakes. One, two, that's your dash of salt. And I measured it. I might be not standing level for your camera here. Your camera might be tilted or whatever, but I am under. I'm under the one half cup water. Okay. I'm going to move this over to the sauce, to the saucepan, to the stove, but I'm not going to cut it on yet. Okay, on your pecans, it doesn't matter if it's a little bit over the half cup, but what does matter is the size of them. If, uh, Growing up, we hit, I've got a big pecan tree in the backyard here, but I never get any pecans off of it because the power lines run right through it and the squirrels just run down that like they've got an assembly line. They run down, they get a nut, they get back on the line, and they disappear. I never get a single pecan off my tree to make a pie with or any candy with or do anything with. We had two pecans in our yard when I was growing up out in West Over Hills, Emporia, and uh, we'd have power lines running through the middle of your backyard there, so we didn't have to worry about the squirrels stealing the nuts. We'd get them, and we'd pick them up, and we'd save them, and we'd crack them, and we'd have them ready to do candy with. But damn, when you go to the market, everything is so expensive. So you get getting the whole pecans, that's outrageous. you got to get the little pecan pieces to be affordable, but these are too big. So well, how are we going to make these smaller pieces to go on candy? Well... You probably got a food processor, and I've got one too. It's over there right next to that Instapot. I just don't use it. I got a candy thermometer too. I don't use that either. I'm going to put them in a Ziploc bag. I'm going to try to. Right. I'm going to get the air out the bag. And I'm going to go think about who I was upsetting me this week. I'm going to crush my nuts.
the lady that jumped in front of me at the grocery store. The man that cut me off when I was trying to turn into the bank drive through My husband, when I reminded him that it was Wednesday, that's the day to take the trash cans down, and he ran off to Bible study and left it out there for me to do. <sighs> Feel better. Okay, we're going to move this over there. These go in. These are the last things to go in, but I've got them ready to go into the candy. I'm going to, uh, uh, I don't need this anymore. I just protected my countertop. I'm going to go ahead and spread out my wax paper so when it's cooked, we can come over here and we can drop them by the teaspoon on the, on the paper. So we're going to move the camera over to the stovetop now. Okay, we're over at the stovetop now. I've got my burner warmed up. I've got my one box of light brown sugar. One half cup of water, dash of salt, just three little simple things, put them on the burner. I'm gonna bring these up to a boil, and once it gets to a boil, it's gotta boil for five minutes. Right at the four minute or so mark, you're going to do what's called the soft ball test. Is you're going to take your spoon, put a little syrup on it, your hot syrup, you're gonna just dribble you just a little, just a little tidbit, and then you're gonna rub between your little fingers, and if it stays together and makes a little ball, it's ready. If not, you gotta put it back on the stove, you gotta boil it a little bit longer. Once it gets to that point, you're gonna cut the stove off, move the saucepan off the burner, and here's just one egg white in here. You gotta beat the heck out of that till it makes stiff peaks. Nothing else, just the egg white. When you get it to that point, you're gonna add your spoon of vanilla to it, and then you're gonna take your syrup. And I'm gonna have to transfer from this pot to this little pot because I gotta be using my hand mixer and drizzling in my syrup at the same time. So it's like walking and chewing gum, and I can't do that. But I don't have three hands. But it's gonna cook better. This is a heavy pot, it's gonna cook cook better. This is a heavy bottom pot that will cook better in here than over there. Once it's all done, we're going to sit there where you got it and you beat it for two minutes with the syrup in it and it's shiny. You go fold in your pecans by hand. Alright. We'll pick back up when I have boiled for four minutes. You don't need to sit here. I don't keep wasting my videos run so long because I sit here and let you watch the whole thing. So we'll pick back up in a few minutes. I can't remember if I told you or didn't tell you. You don't start the timer until it comes to a boil and then you boil for five minutes. You don't start the timer now just because you cut on the stove and cook it for five minutes. That's a mistake too. It's got to come to a boil on low to medium heat and then boil for five minutes to make the syrup that will make seafoam candy. So I'm gonna pick back up with you after I've been boiling for five minutes. Okay, she's boiling, I set my timer. Okay, that's been five minutes, let's do our, let's do our, our temperature check. Give it a little bit. You see, it's start, I can see it setting together. Yep. It didn't all dissolve. Have a little soft ball. It's not a hard crackling ball, it's a soft ball. So we've cut the stove off. Let's move that off halfway off the burner. Wash my hand real quick. Sticky hand, sticky hand. Nothing in this bowl but the egg white. If I were doing meringue bowl or pie, I'd have some prima tartar in it. Oh, my chihuahuas don't like this mixer.
Okay. Let me tie a little bit here. Watch out, puppies. Okay. I might be able to pour the syrup better if I pour from the top with the one hand. So let's move this over here. Get back, you guys. Mama's so hot on you, honey. Okay, let's move teaspoon vanilla. Okay. And then we're going to slowly drizzle in the syrup. Fold in our pecans. Half cup. 
back on this vanilla to get some spit. Reach over the counter because we're gonna drop about tablespoons on wax paper. Wash my hands. Okay, we're done. Well, all we have to do now is portion out all the servings of candy. This is still sticky. It's a sticky mess. It's a sticky mess. It's so delicious. Pick back up when I have it all out for you. I got 49 pieces, almost 50 pieces. I probably a little bit bigger or smaller on some of them than I should have been because, you know, I'm always complaining about my arthritis in these videos to you. I did the best I could. Uh, like I said, it's just family eating. I'm not taking them, I'm not selling them, I'm not taking them parties and stuff like that. So they don't have to be that precise. Let's start with uh, one of the first ones. They need, they need a few minutes to dry out. But also, when you're... When you have finished and you're coming over to your wax paper, you got to move fast because they can kind of uh, crust up on you before you can get them shaped. But what ideally what's going to happen is they air dry. They're going to get a little crusty on the outside and stay a little marshmallow on the inside. Let's see if one's ready to taste yet. Can't wait. I haven't had it in so long. I used to make it all the time. Every time we had a sick relative, especially Uncle Robert, when he when he was sick, I knew he loved it. So I we always had it. It's, box of light brown sugar, a little bit of salt, a little bit of water, some pecans. That was always in the cupboard. So and it only takes 10 minutes to make. Boom! And make it and run it on down to him. Yeah, this one looks like it's almost dry. It's still a little wet on the bottom. Ideally, you'd let it set up a little bit more, but I'm just going to bring one up closer so you can see how pretty they look. Seafoam candy. Oh yeah, I remember that. Mm -mm -mm. Mm -hmm. Thank you for watching. I hope you make it yourself. Holidays are coming up. It'd be a nice gift to give somebody. <laughs>